Here's another equivalent force system. Let's just read through the problem statement. What we have, <coughs> a machine component is subjected to the forces and couples shown. The component is to be held in place by a single rivet that can resist a force, but not a couple. For P equals zero, determine the location of the rivet hole if it is located somewhere on line FG or somewhere on line GH. So we're going to take a single rivet and with that one little guy, we're gonna stop all translational and rotational motion. And there's gonna be just the perfect spot in order to do this. And that's going to involve finding the equivalent resultant force and finding the equivalent resultant moments to put that force in just the right spot. It's a lot to keep track of, so I'm gonna use Excel to help me out. Let's go ahead, split all the forces into their X and Y components, and then we're gonna add everything in the X direction, add everything in the Y direction, and find the resultant force. There are so many different steps to this. It's really easy to make a sine error or punch in cosine instead of sine or not forget radians. And setting it up in a table like this allows you to kind of fix the little mistakes that you make early on without having to continually rework and rework and rework the problem. And it's just a very nice organized way to have all of your X's in a column and all your Y's in a column and very simply sum them all together. So I'm hoping I'm talking everybody into using Excel to organize your work for these problems. So here's the resultant force. If we add all the forces together, and I even added a row for P in case we wanna modify it and change that in the future. So there's our forces. Next, we're gonna to have to figure out the moments of this system. And I've created a few cross products. We're gonna to have to do a cross product for each pair of forces in that position vector. We're gonna do this with respect to point G. G connects both of those lines that the problem asked us about. I'm gonna copy the forces down just so that they're closer to see where they are. R cross F, we have to have the X, Y, Z components of our forces. We can just copy those right out of the table that we already had. Make sure you copy the right numbers there. And this is a two-dimensional problem, so everything in the K direction is zero. But I think it's still safer to put this stuff all the way in a cross product. You'll just make less sign errors than if you try and do all of this in your head. Okay, position vectors. So our position is going up and to the left. I've converted this from millimeters to meters. Be careful of those little 0.05s on there. There's a kind of a little 50 millimeter border on this whole thing. Once you have the moment equations in for one, you can just copy it right over. That's one of the nice things for Excel. You don't have to type those equations in over and over again. So we're just filling in the position vectors from G to where each of those forces is applied. And watch those forces and position vectors are filled in. We've got everything we need to do the moments and all those cross products. Okay, so we have moments from each of those together. We're gonna to add up everything in the I direction, everything in the K direction. It ends up all just being in the K direction because this is a 2D problem. And then the overall moment, and I and J are zero here, but know that the moment adds just like a force vector x a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Okay, so we have the moment from the forces. We also have just those yellow applied moments too. So we need to add those in too. So if we add the forces and the applied moments all together, we get the overall equivalent moment on the system. Ends up being negative 55 Newton meters. So what we've done is we've taken all those forces and all those moments. We have the resultant force and we have the resultant moment. So if we were to collapse and simplify that system into just one force and one moment, that's what it would be. One more step for this, we wanna actually get rid of our moment. We're gonna bump our force away from that corner spot and we're gonna move it 
just right so the position of the force creates that same moment. So I'm going to copy over the moment and we can either get there by walking in the x direction away from g or walking in the y direction away from g. So we're just doing some r cross f's here, looking at the x and y components of our resultant and that little spot A or B, either one would work. They're both on the line of action of that force. That's where you'd want your rivet to be.